fourth quarter really quick. What did you see from him? Uh, Coach Finch said that the, the team kind of challenged him to be aggressive. Uh, just how did he respond and take that to heart uh, early in the fourth there? He was good. He was great. Uh, well, his, you know, we just told him to be special. Like I always told him all year, be special. And he was special again, fourth quarter. Um, I think the game finally came to him. He, he found the holes he was looking for the whole game and uh, found the lanes and he just made the most of them. And obviously he's being superiorly talented. It's funny. We're going against Steph Curry tonight and him and Steph are two of the best uh, dribble pull up three point shooters in the league. So it's just a matchup of who could hit more threes and, and did a hell of a job of matching um, just the intensity and just matching the physicality he needed to have to be successful in this game. How much are, I think, I don't think you guys have lost in front of a crowd uh, since fans have been let back in target center. Uh, did I just jinx it? Let's <laughs> not jinx that. Boy. Um, what and energy wise, just what does it, what does it give to you that, that obviously was lacking maybe early in the season? Just think that just I don't think it's uh, I love our fans and everything, but um, not to dismiss them, but it's not our fans. I think I think it's just us having that connecting. We're hitting on cylinders right now that we weren't hitting on earlier, and the execution is there. And I think the biggest difference in us from before is just the physicality we play with. I think the physicality being picked up changed the game for us uh, defensively and offensively. But, you know, I think what was always stopping us from winning was not our offense, but it was our defense. And I've said that all year. And I think that we're now trying to make sure we get the stops instead of the points uh, as a team. And we're accepting that that's going to be our identity and it's led us to four straight wins. John? Hey, Carl, the way that you guys are playing right now, kind of building off of that, it, I mean, you're winning these games just, it seems like just flat out. You're not, you know, you know it's not one of those things where you hit 25 threes and, and it's kind of fluky. It just seems like you're controlling both sides a little bit more. Is that more, does it feel like more, even more real when, when you're, when you do that, you know, when you're out playing the jazz, the warriors, things like the way that you guys are right now. I just think that we're playing good basketball right now. Um, uh, it's just good basketball, uh, physical executing at a high level basketball. Uh, just proud of these guys. We, we keep growing every single day and that's all you can ask for uh, every single day, building something great. And, I think that, and I think that for us and you guys as well, I think you're seeing that we're putting actually brick by brick together and building something special. In the earlier earlier this season, when the losses were stacking up, could you see something like this coming? Did it feel like this was a potential, or like how did you keep your mindset through the tougher times to get to where you're at right now? Just fight, uh, just fight. Uh, Unfortunately, I have experience in seasons like this. So I think for just using experience and understanding that the season's not truly over, I, you know, the next one's truly starting and it begins with us getting this stuff in now and playing and executing at a high level. Um, it's really important to work at being the team we see ourselves, even if we're not there yet. So uh, these games matter just because they don't, um, obviously we're not going to be in the playoffs and, these games are not getting us to a playoff spot. It's getting us for a playoff spot, not this year, but next year. And that's why it's so important to execute and play at a high level now. Thanks. So Carl, back to your arm. Did you guys literally get like post-game victory shots? You know what I'm trying to say? We, we put the tequila down and got COVID <laughs> vaccines. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> so it, it's good, man. You get the second dose, uh, probably feel like shit, but guess what? We got it done. So I love it. <laughs> Um, I'm excited to, you know, be fully vaccinated finally. And, uh, you know, uh, I've said it before and say it again. You know, I think it's important for all of us to get vaccinated. We want to see life come back to normal. We all got to make the sacrifice and make that uh, the effort to go get the vaccine. Then, like, you and D'Lo combined for, like, 9 for 29 tonight. And yet, like, the team wins. Um, does that just show, like, when you guys play the right way, like, you can do things like this? You know, like... <laughs> Uh, the nine look good though. <laughs> as long as they felt good. <laughs> the nine look good. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, it just shows that when we play defense with the physicality and the urgency and the execution that we did with tonight, uh, even giving up 114 points, but to a team that's been red hot, especially Steph Curry, who's been red hot. I mean, it just speaks that 
you don't need us to go for 40, 30, and win. We could do this as a team and play solid defense, play physical, play and execute at a high level, where even nights when me and D'Lo are just not hitting shots, um, we're, we're, we're playing so well defensively in it. I was just, we, I kept saying in the huddle, you know, we keep drawing these plays up with Coach Finch. And I said, well, we shouldn't, if we're doing what we're supposed to do, we shouldn't need to get to the plate because we should be playing defense, getting stops, getting steals, getting rebounds, pushing transition where we can't do a half court set, but we're getting layups, you know? And we got to a point, I think there was like four straight possessions. We got a steal, we got a block, we got a long rebound, got a 50-50 ball, and we just sprinted out and got layups. J.O. got a layup. I think Ricky got a layup. Ant got a layup. Um, you know, when you're doing stuff like that, um, that's the way we should be playing. We, we're one of the youngest teams in the league. We should use our youth to our advantage and push the pace on people and, and get ourselves some easy points where we don't have to go against half court sets and we could go two on one, three on two, uh, four on three, five on four, five on three. You know, we had some moments where, you know, they try to make a tough layup, they miss, they fall on the floor. We're on a five on four break. There should be no reason we shouldn't be pushing the ball as fast as we can. Royce, go ahead. Hey, Carl, I, I've got a little bit of an off-topic question to ask you, but um, Carmelo Anthony's about to move into the top 10 all-time scoring. He's like 40 points away. And, I, and I'm just trying to kind of get uh, the thoughts of, of some of the younger stars in the league of Carmelo's journey and how unique it is to go from an icon in the NBA to out of the league and then now to come back into the league and get into the top 10. What is Carmelo's journey kind of – from, from the way you see it, how, how, do, how do you view that? Well, for me, my, my, I think really for me, I've seen Carmelo play since he was in high school. I remember watching him at the primetime shootout in, in uh, Trenton, Jersey. Um, he was always special. One of the most gifted offensive players I've ever seen. And then, um, obviously being a Jersey boy, you know, just throughout and being super proud of it to, to be able to, be in the atmosphere when he came to the garden and the way he just kind of like transformed the swag of the Knicks and like, he just made it so cool to be a Nick. You know, Carmelo Anthony's in the, in the, in the hood now, like, come on, like, that's crazy. And uh, man, I grew up playing 2K and being on practice mode and situationals and just consistently only playing 2K with 10 seconds left with the Knicks, Carmelo got the ball last shot. Like I've only, me and my, best friend uh, since childhood we used to just do that for hours just straight Carmelo taking the last shot see who could hit out of 20 game winners who could hit more game winners than the other so it's you know he was just transcendent as a player you know the way he scores I think what no one and I, I mean for me in my eyes and studying basketball for so long I've never seen someone be so effective at the triple threat just his ability to just be – it's almost unstoppable. You kind of are taking guesses that when you're guarding him, triple threat, especially in his prime, especially now, still still is a guess most of the time, you know, if he's going to drive or he's going to pull up, when he's going to pull up, is he going to pull up? Is he going to just pump fake you and get you to foul him? So he, he's an icon in his game. There's no doubt about it. Uh, if I had to put my opinion in it, uh, in it, he's obviously first ballot Hall of Famer. He's one of the best small forwards that ever played this game. Um, one of the most electrifying players this league has ever seen. And um, I'm just so fortunate to not only get to play against him, but to call him a friend as well, and to be with him in the Social Justice Coalition as well. He wants some amazing work. Thanks, Thanks Carl. Thank you. Carl, right, well, Ricky was just talking a, a little bit about how he sees some parallels between what you guys are doing right now and what Phoenix was able to do at the end of last season when they went 8-0 in the bubble. Do you see any parallels there? And is that kind of what you're talking about when you say, like, what we're doing now is about what we're going to be able to translate to next season? Um, I think that just like Phoenix, we're just growing. Um, I think, you know, the, the things that keep us from winning, we're trying to fix right now. And I think the fans, you guys are seeing it, that every day we're putting the effort in to fix our mistakes and to fill in the gaps in our game and as a team. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Phoenix did an amazing thing in the bubble, got close this year. They took that experience in the bubble and moved it to this year and obviously clinched the playoff spot already. Um, we got to be able to do that. We got to first, we got just like the bubble, we got to finish the season strong, just the same way we're playing. We still got, I think, eight games, eight, seven. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, 
these eight, seven games, if we want to have that Phoenix narrative, we got to finish strong. And we got to play the way we're supposed to play and, and show that we're having signs of improvement. Now, if we go in with that, not only does that show you guys that we're putting the effort in, but it also shows us that we could do it. So now we take this momentum, we get a whole training camp, we get a whole summer, we get continuity, we, re- we build unity, we build camaraderie. Camaraderie? Great word. And, and we, um, we just keep growing. And by the time we get to next year, now we have a better, you know, better idea of our system. We also now could play intricate games where we could play more chess instead of checkers. I think we're playing right now. I think we're just playing a basic game and we're kind of trying to figure it out, making the right moves. But we take a summer to really learn our games and, and really mesh with each other. Uh, now we could be talking about playing chess and the, the champions and all of them play chess at a high level. Great. Thanks, Carl.